So I'm gonna read you something that, um, something that I was sent from a subscriber, and I think this is, he was watching a Rudy video. Uh, the Rudy video was record shattering magic collections being sold. And he says, so this is a Facebook, this is a Facebook friend now, we know each other. I know a little bit about who he is. He obviously knows I put all my, you know, my stuff is online, it's everywhere. Um, record shattering magic collections being sold. Rudy acting like it's not a big deal that Star City Games isn't paying cash anymore for buy list due to demand being too high for people wanting to sell collections and get out of magic basically. I don't know man, I just see some flaws with Rudy's logic. He doesn't account for people leaving the game with most of what he says in his videos. Like demand for vintage stuff and nostalgia, that decreases when people who played in the 90s quit the game. He's absolutely right. You can only be nostalgic about a game if you actually played it in the 90s. And how many of those players still exist or want to come back to the game? I would say very few. I retired from Magic in 2019. If I wanted a six-figure Magic collection, I could have one, but I don't. I decided I was done with the game even before I had the wealth I have now. For every one of me, 10 people wealthier than me have also left. For every one of me, how many newcomers have come in and who has interest in the vintage stuff Rudy has invested in? Maybe 0.1? I really do respect Rudy and what he has built from the ground up. Hell, I... Okay, so then, I mean, um, he, he actually knows and has met Rudy, so I'm not gonna read that part because then Rudy would know who he is. But I think his business model has run its course. I also think he should have exited it before now. I exited my position years ago and made good money in graded cards and some other stuff. Don't exit at the very top, but I didn't exit at the very top, but I also had a since validated feeling about where things were headed and I don't have heavy bags now like him. So this guy's actually met Rudy Chan and they sat down and talked. And I'm sure that if I mentioned his name, Rudy would know exactly who he is. Uh, he doesn't seem to understand when things tanked in 2020, they did recover, but due to extremely abnormal conditions, interest rates low, unprecedented government stimulus plans, etc., never happening again. What will be the catalyst for things coming back up from the current MTG bear market? Interest rates, the Fed has told us they are going up one or two more times, not down. Stimulus, that's not happening again. Economy sucks ass, despite what Joe Biden says. If I had $5 million to park right now, I'd be happy making 250K in interest, risk-free, sitting in cash now. What is the motivation to take speculative investment in high risk vintage magic stuff? Or more magic stuff which has the risk level similar to crypto? Uh, we both talk and joke about crypto, so uh, that's the other topic we talk about a lot on Facebook. Crypto, baby. The new magic stuff, that's what I mean. Can lose half its value overnight due to Amazon dumps? That sounds more like crypto to me than an investment. So, um, you know, I, I think this is where I am with this is like, it's effing crazy right now, the economy and a magic, the gathering, you got buy list is not paying out in cash. They want you to trade your magic cards for more magic cards. <laughs> they don't want you to leave. Uh, a lot of you don't like understand this, but I'll try to, I, there are probably five, maybe six people I constantly talk to that I found from Magic the Gathering who I would view as friends. I've never met them, but I think um, just given the amount of time we talk online, we probably have created a friendship and understanding. We talk very intelligently. A few of them are doctors. You can tell them they tend to be wealthier individuals who at one point had large magic collections and it's interesting to get their perspective about it. Somebody who's out first in. I, um, my first step was I just didn't want to buy anymore. Um, I, I tried to stop buying them um, due to personal reasons, also um, financial reasons. I'm not going to lie to you. It's really hard right now to start. I started a law firm July 1st and the loans are still taking a long time. There is um, 
lawsuits, uh, lawsuit impeding, which I'll go over after it's resolved. Hopefully it'll be resolved sometime soon. That position is Wednesday. And uh, yeah, the, the bill, even though I'm not paying for it, seems very high on this case. Um, yeah, man, I mean, it's a, a lot of shit that I had to do and you don't have enough time and you don't have enough money to do all everything you wanna do, but you gotta prioritize. Actually, a guy who used to make our YouTube shorts on this channel, uh, he approached me because uh, the previous business venture that he joined, uh, I guess it finally ended and he's looking for opportunity here and it's very tempting because he did do a good job um, on the YouTube shorts on this channel. He did a very good job saw some copyright music, but the, the graphics and the editing, or I mean, God forbid editing was good. But the question is, can I hire him? Should I have the money to hire him? This is all about, you know, I, I, life as where does this is going to sound is mostly about how much cash flow you have. And uh, yeah, so, mm. It is night and I mean the whales, I know many whales in this game. I myself am a giant whale in this game and it is, we are being hunted to extinction by Wizards of the Coast and they just want our blubber or whatever it is. Um, it's not good times, man. It's not fun times. I, I don't think anyone's having a great time doing this at this point in time. I know Alpha Investments, you can tell he's tired. Like I know what it's like to have a half a million dollars in this shit. But imagine having like five million, ten million dollars in this and looking at the price every day and it goes down. It's depressing. It's um it's sad, man. It's sad. Bye guys.